All right, guys, so let's be real here. There's been a whole lot of talk about the Hellcat going away, the Scat Pack going away, the Charger and Challenger going away as we know it. To some degree, that's true. The body is going away. The body of a Challenger is going away. The body of a Charger is going away. But the Hellcat and the Scat Pack and even the 5.7 Hemi will live on. You want to know why? One word, swaps. How many times have you seen a Hellcat or a Scat Pack engine in a Chrysler 300 or in an old school SRT Charger? Or even in the Dodge Neon, taking it back to the taking it back to the old school Dodgers, the Hellcat engine will live on because it can be swapped in and out of damn near any body style that you can imagine. I'm looking at a Nissan 350Z with a Hellcat engine, Jeep Wagoneer with a Hellcat engine, old school Chevy Box um, Cutlass with a Hellcat engine. As long as your car can accept an engine and a transmission. You can call it a Hellcat, and a Hellcat will live on. Even Dodge started this with the 2025 Chargers. Take that electric motor out, drop a Hellcat engine. Now you got a 2025 Dodge Charger Hellcat. The Hellcat's not going anywhere. Neither is the Hemi. Let's talk about it. What's up, guys? It's your boy Knockout360 here with another video, man. So you can tell I'm in a house that makes it the house vlog. You know what's going down when I come around. Let's get into it, man. I've got car content, car shows, car reviews, car meets. Anything and everything car related happens on this channel, man. So if you're into that, make sure that you stick around. For everyone else, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so that you know what's coming out and when it's coming out. So boom, I just want you guys to see this. This is something that I saw on um, TikTok, right? Something just crazy. Completely stopped me in my tracks. The Hellcat Swap 350Z finally runs. After spending the last few months figuring out the hardware side of the swap, the final thing we had to do was wire up our Holly Dominator ECU. We mounted everything under the passenger kick panel, and yes, I'm aware it looks like a giant mess of wires right now, but there is an ECU under there, I promise. Finally. Do the honors. Yeah, that's a 707 horsepower supercharged V8 and a Nissan 350Z. That's literally the perfect world of what power looks like. You got a big engine with a very light, small, agile body, something we've been asking for since the Hellcat came out. It's alive! Finally! Finally! It's been a long time! Sound like a Hellcat to me. Red uh, with the this green belt. Those really, really rare projects that you fire up for the very first time and it runs pretty much fine. Now that it's finally running, the next thing on the agenda is to get it to drive. And before we do that, we have just a little bit of work to do. So more they got to get it to part. drive, obviously. Yes, exactly. But isn't that crazy? And look, listen, a lot of you guys will say, well, it probably doesn't perform like a Hellcat. Sounds like a Hellcat to me. beating the shit out of it man shout out to that youtube uh to that instagram page man i don't know exactly who they are because somebody sent it to me but that right there just goes to show you that the hellcat engine isn't going anywhere the hellcat engine isn't going anywhere so as long as the hellcat's alive the v8 is alive and as long as you've got uh if you're a purist and you want to keep it strictly pure to mopar as long as you've got a dodge body maybe you've got a you know maybe let's fast forward maybe three years from now you know, and you've got your your hands on a, a 2020 wide body charger body. Get you a Hellcat engine, drop it in there. Now you got yourself a Hellcat. You know what I'm saying? It gets even crazier than that. Let me show you what else we uh, what else people are doing. Look at this. Old school Belvedere with the Hellcat engine. In it got a whipple on top. Old school. You know what I mean? Even in the old schools. And let's go and let's look at something even crazier than that. Wagoneer. Let me mute that. Look at that. World's first Hellcat swap Jeep Wagoneer. You can see it's totaled because whoever was driving didn't know how to drive it. Wagoneer. What else? Let's get even crazier than that. 
for the last six months, I've been swapping this Hellcat engine out of a wrecked 2016 Dodge Challenger into my 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass. In the middle of this project, I moved cross country to Tennessee, and since I was so close to Holly's headquarters in Bowling Green, I decided to give myself the goal of having this project running and driven to Holly's Mo Party on September 14th. The event did actually start on the 13th, but I was doing some last minute wiring that day. But that night, I actually got the car running and I was able to test and make sure everything worked. The next morning, I robbed the tires off my 60. The best way to test if your Hellcat engine works in your car is to do a burnout. If you can do a burnout successfully, that's how you know it works. Six cutlass because the Hellcats were too old and I guess the previous owner didn't want me to go because there was a wheel lock on the wheels and I couldn't find the key. So I had to break out the welder. But after a quick stress test, we're ready to get on the road. And this was probably the most stressful drive of my life. The tune does need a bit of an adjustment on a dyno, but besides that, I had no dash and had to use my computer as an instrument cluster, and I only had a three gallon fuel cell, so on this 100 mile drive, I stopped three times. But Mo Party was definitely worth the drive. There's drag racing, autocross, and I got to park my car in front of the Holly booth. Now, I did leave a bit. Look at that, man. Look at that. Tell me that's not a thing of beauty right there. Do you know what I mean? An Oldsmobile Cutlass swapped Hellcat. So I'm saying all this to say, man, listen, the Hellcat isn't going anywhere. As long as there's a Hellcat engine somewhere, and there always will be, because people are always going to do what? They're going to crash the shit out of their Hellcats. Whenever these Hellcats get crashed, I can't tell you. So boom, whenever somebody on Instagram crashes their Hellcat and you see a video of it, what do all the comments look like? Oh, is the engine okay? Is the transmission okay? Are the wheels okay? Is the interior okay? Why? Because they want to chop that car into bits and pieces and drop that Hellcat into something else, right? Even with the 392, there's this clean ass 392. It's a uh, swap 300. Once again, even before 300 came out with the 6.4, um, he did it first. You know what I'm saying? It's a red one. I can't think of the dude's name. I see him in Charlotte all the time. I don't think he lives in Charlotte, though. But he's got a red uh, 392 swapped 300. And the thing about it is it's not even that hard to do. Now, mind you, I'm not doing it myself. I don't know how to do that stuff. But I'm saying it's not hard to do as in I feel like if you're in a car community, you know somebody that can swap an engine. I know two guys right now that can swap an engine that can take the Hellcat engine out of my car and drop that shit into a, I don't know, a Ford Focus or something like that. So it's one of those things like, yeah, we're losing the Charger, we're losing the Challenger as we know it, we're losing the wide body, we're losing all of that stuff. But as long as these engines are around, you will have a Hemi. You will have a Hellcat. You will have a Scat Pack. People are always and forever going to crash their, their Charger and Challengers, crash their Scats, crash their Cats, crash their 5.7s. And in that case, what happens? They get sent to the junkyard because people don't want to deal with it. And they say, you know what? Have the insurance company write me a check. I'm done with it. I had my fun with the Mopar. And then you literally got a, a $20,000, $30,000 engine just sitting on the lot collecting dust. And then that's when somebody goes back there, looks at an old school Hellcat that's crashed. That's, the dude, that's exactly what the dude said. 2016 Hellcat Challenger that was totaled. Drop, take that engine right out. Take the transmission. Drop it into whatever body style you want. These engines are not going anywhere. So if a lot of you guys are worried about the potential of not getting your hands on a scat pack or Hellcat before it's all said and done, trust me when I say you go out and find you a, a you know, a V6 or a V8 body, right? And you get your hands on a totaled uh, Hellcat engine and make sure it's totaled. Don't don't go the stolen route. You know, don't don't be that guy. Don't contribute to that. Although I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have stolen Hellcat engines in your car as we speak, but we're not going to talk on that. But I mean, as long as you can get your hands on a Hellcat or a Scat Pack engine, you will forever have a Hemi. The Hemi will always be around. Not to mention in my previous video, we talked about how Dodge, even with the 2025 Charger, electric Charger, that is the SRT Daytona Banshee, to my understanding, based off of what the video said, based off of what we're seeing, you will still be able to yank all of that electric bullshit out, the, the electric motor, the battery, or whatever, I got to stop saying motor, electric battery, all that stuff, yank all of that out, drop a 6.2 or a 6.4 in there, rear-wheel drive transmission, now you got yourself a legitimate muscle car, legitimate old-school V8-powered muscle car. It's only a matter of time before 
that 2024 or 2025 Charger drops and somebody swaps it with a Hellcat or a Scat Pack engine. Mark my words, it's going to happen. So I'm saying all that to say, guys, you know, don't don't get so down on the fact that Dodge isn't going to be around because as long as these motors are around, as long as these engines are around, and you can literally go to Dodge.com and uh, buy a crate engine. You can buy a Red Eye crate, a Hellcat crate, Demon crate, Demon 170 crate, Elephant crate. You got to have some money, but you can certainly do it. As long as these engines are around, you can drop them into any car that you want and have yourself a V8 Hemi. Right, these engines are going to outlast and outlive the cars themselves much longer. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, they're not making the Charger and the Challenger uh, like we know them, like we we've known in the past. Especially the Challenger, they're not making a Challenger at all. But regardless of that, the fact of the matter remains that you know these cars are here to stay as long as the engine is here, and the engine is here. So, you know, I just wanted to bring that to you. I thought that was interesting, man. Shout out to all of these creators on TikTok. Uh, dropping a Hellcat engine and a Nissan 350Z, that's, that's, that's wild work right there. That's crazy work, but it's the perfect, you know, it's the, the, the blend of the perfect world. You know, um, you get a nice light, small body in the Nissan engine and the Nissan, you know, design. And then you got this big 707 horsepower engine. Like that thing is doing numbers. And it probably will beat a standard, you know, Hellcat. I don't know. I don't know if it runs like that. I know they had some issues with it later on. But what I do know is that, you know, if it does what it's supposed to do, it's going to be a monster of an engine and a monster of a car. So the Hemi will live on is what I'm saying, guys. Trust me when I say that. As always, like, subscribe, comment. It's been your boy, Knockout360. I'll see you in the next one, man. Peace.